Hey, it's Matt Moscona. You found it. It's AFR LSU, your home for daily content on your favorite team, Fight Tigers of LSU. And we're proud to be presented by BetUS, where this football season get a 150% bonus on your first deposit and a 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000. Be sure to use the promo code YouTube150. Now, enjoy the video. Top 10 team coming into Baton Rouge this weekend. You can feel the juice already around town. It's pretty awesome. It's going to be a great night in uh, Tiger Stadium. Neil McCready, Rebel Grove, good enough to join us on the show. Talk a little bit about the Rebs. Hey, man, how are you? Matt, I'm good. It's good to be with you. How are you? Awesome. We always appreciate the time, man. Quite honestly, it's uh, it, it's it stinks that we're here already in, in October and we're only now going to have a, a night game in Tiger Stadium that people are actually going to be excited about, but we'll take it. Um, give me a sense of where the, the sort of temperature is with this Ole Miss team after the hot start, the really very surprising loss to Kentucky, and then you know, last week coming into Baton Rouge? Yeah, um, probably as I told you back in July when we talked, I mean, there's never been more hype or expectations around the team, and then more importantly, inside a team at Ole Miss probably in, I don't know, long before. I'm not a historian. This is my 17th year on the beat. It's not even close. This is the most... This is the the, high, the loftiest expectations inside a program here and, and all the time I've been here. Their goal is to win the national championship. Now, I, I didn't say they're going to, or everybody goes crazy. That's their goal. Mm. Um, it, they, didn't, they didn't ever run from it. Um, and they looked phenomenal in the first four weeks, but they beat four teams that all sucked. And none of those teams would, were ever going to do anything against anybody in the SEC. N- nobody. So those four teams combined, had they played a 16-game SEC schedule, they would have gone, man, I mean, maybe one in 63, maybe somebody pulls off a miracle. I mean, but that's it. Um, so they get to Kentucky, and Kentucky had been tested. Kentucky had played South Carolina. Kentucky had played Georgia. And it was the first time they got punched in the face, and they just didn't handle it super great. Now, they, you go and you look at the statistics in that game, and you know, Ole Miss had about two yards per play more than Kentucky, but they had a hard time getting Kentucky off the field. Uh, Mark Stoops and them had a great plan. They executed the plan and the game got close and, you know, uh, Kentucky converted a fourth and seven from their own 18 and made a big play. Vandegrift made a terrific throw and Barry and Brown, who's an absolute, you know, speed merchant, uh, got open, made a catch. They they converted it, made a touchdown. Then they got you know they stopped him, and Ole Miss missed a field goal that would have sent the game to overtime. And uh, it was over. And to answer your question, they were heartbroken. They were uh, they were kind of devastated. Really, I think it was a a brutally dif- difficult loss for them to absorb. But uh, they they came back last week and and uh, went to South Carolina and, and really dominated that game on the road from start to finish and set up what I think is, man, I mean, if you told me this was a college football playoff play-in game, I kind of buy it, uh, especially for, um, I mean, they both teams really, but, but the one that I cover, Ole Miss, I mean, I can make that argument really easy. Yeah, you hang a second L here and you still got Georgia ahead. It's, it's easy to see how the path would, uh, would not be very clear. Uh, for all yeah. this, if you lose this game, we'll get right back to the video. But I'm thrilled to continue to remind you about our partners this football season on AFR LSU at BetUS. If you sports bet like I do, you got to sports bet with BetUS. Even if you're with a different platform, take advantage of this amazing sign up bonus 150% on your first deposit and 125% on your next two deposits, up to $2,000. If you're going to sports bet, why wouldn't you take advantage of this? Use the promo code YouTube150. I'll show you how easy it is to use BetUS. You go to the sports book, you hit football, the college football lines are right there. Toggle, you can find LSU and Ole Miss. Look, the Tigers are getting three points at home. Nighttime in Death Valley? Are you kidding me? Better believe I'll take those three points at home with LSU. So we'll come over to our betting slip. How much do we want to wager? About 25 bucks. We'll place the bet. It's going to ask me to confirm just a few taps, and then you are locked in on your bet. Just that simple, and we're ready to roll. LSU plus three at home against the Rebs. 
I might even take a look at the money line. But whatever you do, make sure you use BetUS. 150% deposit bonus when you sign up on your first deposit. 125% on your next two deposits, up to $2,000. Use that promo code YouTube150. Enjoy the rest of the video. So which is the real Ole Miss? Is it the team that, that got out physical by Kentucky, or is it the really good offense we saw in that first month? Oh, so offensively, I have some questions, you know, because they've, 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 they've not been electric in these two SEC games. Um, they've left points on the board. Receivers have been open, and Jackson Dart hasn't hit them. Um, he's missed some reads. I don't think he's been super sharp in these two games. They've not, they don't have so far the kind of occasionally dominant running game that they had a year ago. They've been banged up up front. Um, the jury's out on them offensively. Now, Matt, I don't think the jury's out on them defensively. I think this is especially up front and elite defense, which is hard to say about Ole Miss because just a couple of years ago, they were horrible on, on defense and they couldn't stop anybody and brought Pete Golding in and they've given him full authority and autonomy on the defensive side of the ball. And, and he has done a great job. They, they did a tremendous job in the portal with some key additions and, and they're significantly better on defense. They're really good there. Um, you know, but to answer your question about offense, I mean, I'm jury's out. I lean to it's still an electric offense that's going to score a bunch of points. But the last two weeks have shaken that confidence a little bit. Neil McCready, rebelgrove.com, talking Rebs. Uh, you can get him at Neil McCready on Twitter. X is Trey Harris going to play? I believe so, yes. And the fact that I believe that he is, uh, based on what I've heard, is. It indicates to me that he got lucky and the injury wasn't anywhere near as serious as it probably could have been if you kind of watched the replay of that play. So, and he's, listen, he's the stir that serves the, he's the straw that serves the drink on that, on that offense. But he is, I think he's a bit of a cheat code. He and, he and Dart have such a connection. He's already caught 52 passes. Uh, the next leading receiver, receiver on Ole Miss's team has 19. Uh, that's, um, Caden Lee, the slot receiver. So, I mean, Jackson Dart loves throwing the ball to Trey Harris. The offense is, in many ways, built around throwing the ball to Trey Harris. And, um, you know, it's what Lane does well throughout his career at USC, at, at Alabama, at FAU, and now at Ole Miss. Is, is He's not afraid to feed, um, you know, one guy. And so if if Harris couldn't play, I was going to say, and I, don't, I just don't know, I don't know what this looks like, but if Harris can go and he's effective, I think he's he's obviously someone that that LSU is going to worry about and have to spend a lot of time thinking about. What if he's what if he's limited? Let's say you get you know seventy five percent Trey Harris. Some other guys are going to have to step up. That's the case. I mean, if that's the deal, Juice Wells will have to step up. They're going to have to get more out of their tight ends. They'll have to get more out of Caden Lee, more out of Jordan Watkins. They have other weapons, but look, I mean, there's no way around this. You know, you've 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 been covering LSU for a long time when you have an elite wide receiver and I do think Trey Harris is an elite wide receiver yes. when you have an elite wide receiver and you take him out of the lineup your offense is not as good as it was with him in it I mean you you don't lose Jamar Chase out of the lineup and be like oh yeah we're good or you know or Malik Neighbors or whatever you lose those kinds of receivers and and you're, you're going to take a step back so if he's not close to a hundred percent um their offense their offense will have to find production elsewhere uh what about the running game with uh, Parrish? Look, Par Henry Parrish is averaging six yards a carry. Um, does it look different whenever you're you're playing SEC defenses as opposed to that first month? Um, yeah, it's been down a little bit, but I thought he's held his own. I thought he was okay against Kentucky. I thought he was okay against South Carolina. The the big span story here has been Ulysses Bentley the, four the fourth, who was sort of the change of pace back last year and ran for about 600 yards. He really hasn't played, and nobody really knows why. We ask Lane, and we get really vague answers. Uh, Matt Jones has been the backup. He got banged up in the last couple of minutes at South Carolina. It was listed as doubtful on Lane's uh, novel length, uh, length um, <laughs> injury report yesterday. I don't necessarily know what to think of that. In the event that Jones is indeed doubtful, I think you'll see more of Bentley and uh, the fans have certainly been clamoring for that. They look. You and I talked about this in the summer. They two things can be true at once. You can be glad to be rid of the pain in the ass that sometimes was Quinshawn Judkins, 
And you can also really miss the quality running back that Quinshawn Judkins was at Ole Miss. And I think both of those things are true. Yeah. Um, Who's a guy or a position for Saturday that we're not talking about that we should be? So I think this game comes down to elite units. Um, I think LSU's offensive line is terrific. Great players. I think Ole Miss's defensive line is terrific. Great players. I think this thing comes down to the obvious, right? Can LSU run the ball effectively enough to have third and manageable? Because if you have third and manageable, you can't key off, tee off after the quarterback. But for the sake of our little discussion, let's say that LSU doesn't have a tremendous amount of success running the football. If they do, they're going to win, obviously. Let's say they, let's say they, they have a, a, a mediocre running game. And this thing has some third and sevens, some third and eights. Kentucky was able to convert those plays. They were able to, to, to move the chains. To me, this thing's going to come down to LSU's ability to block what I think is a very explosive defensive line, especially on passing downs where everybody knows, hey, you're going to have to throw the football here. LSU hasn't allowed anyone to get to Nussmeyer. Ole Miss has pretty much gotten every quarterback they've gone after this year. So I want to see how that shakes out. I got to watch. He doesn't get talked about much because people talk about Prince William on Mielin and they talk about Walter mm-hmm. Nolan, but Santarin Perkins was the reigning defensive player of the week in the SEC. He was terrific against South Carolina. He was really good against Kentucky as well. Um, he's a guy that's really beginning to emerge. He reminds a lot of people of Harold Perkins that first year at LSU where they just sort of let him get after the quarterback. And uh, Santarin Perkins has done the same thing at Ole Miss and has been really effective. I mean, he is... He has been a menace in the backfield, super athletic kid, can chase people down as a problem for, for offensive tackles, especially in these downs where you know he gets to just pin his ears back and go. Got a couple more. Um, what about the Ole Miss offensive line that's, that's had some injuries? LSU's defensive front, at least you know, causing pressure, has been pretty good this year. How does Ole Miss's offensive line look? They've been banged up. They just can't get healthy. They're not going to have Jaden Williams, their starting left tackle, on on Saturday. He's out for at least another couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of their interior guys, Caleb Warren, really hasn't played much. Um, Jeremy James, who's started at Ole Miss forever, um, really hasn't played much, has a hand injury. He was listed as doubtful on the report on Wednesday night. So, I mean, they're, they thought going into the season, Matt, that was going to be a strength. So far, it hasn't been a weakness, but it hasn't been a strength. They haven't dominated anybody. They held their own against South Carolina. That's pretty good pass rush they have at, at most of the time. I and mean, they got beat some. But like I said, they haven't been able to establish that running game. They've yet to prove that so far on a down where, hey, you just need to go get a yard or two, and by God, we're going to run it. They've yet to prove that they can consistently go get those yards. Now, I think they're going to run Jackson Dartmore Saturday. I think they've intentionally kept that off the menu a little bit for a number of reasons. Hmm. I think they'll have to use him as a runner against LSU some if they're, if they're going to have the kind of run game success that really Lane Kiffin's offense is built around. This series historically has had uh, quite a few notable special teams plays in it, to say the very least. Um, how are the Rebs on special teams? They punted the ball really well. Um, Caden Davis had a big miss in that Kentucky game. Yeah. You know, it's not fair to pin a game, pin one game on a kicker. That's stupid. No one's doing that. But that was a kick that, you know, I think they thought he would make, that they thought he should make, and they probably would have felt pretty good about things in overtime, but he didn't make it. Um, you know, and like anybody else, man, I mean, nobody's returning the ball anymore. Everybody kicks the ball out of the end zone. They've got Micah Davis, Utah State transfer portal guy, returning punts, and he's he's shown some – He's had a few where he was looked like he was close to breaking one. I'm not saying he's going to do that this weekend at all, but they're they're to answer your question, they're pretty solid in the kicking game. All right, last thing: um, Ole Miss wins Saturday if fill in the blank. Yeah, it, it's you 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 have to you have to get ahead in Tiger Stadium. I've been to that stadium so many times. I'm a Louisiana boy. I've covered other teams at LSU. You've you've got to get ahead of them. You can't let on a night on a night game where they're celebrating the hundred year anniversary and all that stuff. You 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 just can't you can't let the fans start becoming a major factor in that thing because it'll take it will impact your offense. 
They can't get rattled. I don't think this team will get rattled. This is a pretty veteran, older team that's been together for a while. Uh, I know it's famous last words for a team right before they go into LSU, but I'd be really surprised <laughs> if this one got rattled. But, um, you know, you're, you're, if you can't run the football and get a, and stay ahead of the chains, you run the risk of that crowd becoming a major factor in that game late. They're great at it. It's one of the greatest atmospheres in all of college football. And so I think the key thing for them is their tempo has to work. They have to be able to run the ball effectively to a degree. And when they have scoring opportunities, they have to score because it's like any other fan base. This isn't a knock on LSU, their fans, or anyone else. But if you maintain a you know a 10-point lead sort of throughout a game, the, the fans aren't the factor that they can be if they start to smell the blood. Neil McCready, rebelgrove.com. Get him on Twitter at Neil McCready. Hey, man, uh, enjoy the game Saturday. We always appreciate the time. Thank you. Matt, always good to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching the video. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, hit the bell so you're notified when we post a new video. And remember to support BetUS, where right now you can get a 150% bonus on your first deposit and a 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000. Be sure to use that promo code YouTube150.